So you all are probably aware of this. Um, uh, hearts going out to anybody who's being impacted by the flooding in Assam and Bangladesh. And if you have the ability to do it, you can go to Give India. Um, Give India has a fundraiser right now for specifically for Assam. And the situation is still not really good over there. So I'm looking at my phone because I had gotten an email from Give India about that. Um, and just we have we've, we've known it's been going on. And it is something that happens during this monsoon season each year. There is flooding, but this one's particularly bad. So yeah. send out love to all you there. Yeah. Just Hey, we'll go back to our stupid reactions. <laughs> what? Where did you go? I don't know. Uh, he went off to the... Yeah. Spider-Verse. Yep. Hey, we'll go back to our stupid reactions. It's Corbin. I'm right. What'd you drink in there? Water. Oh, just plain old straight up water? Mm -hmm. Good for you. Hydration. My wife would be very proud of you. It's very important. She carries a bottle of water with her everywhere she goes. I normally do drink water. Yeah. Water is very important. Uh, today we got a food video. Yay! And it's uh, me liking the food. Best ever food review show. Yay! And it's a new video. It just came out on the nineteenth. Cool. The, uh, awesome. It's India's mega street food factories in Hyderabad, Khatam, Halim, Hyderabad, Halim, and Briani. Yeah, Hyderabad, Halim, and Briani. Uh, this is so. It's uh, gonna make us hungry. Oh uh, yeah, it is. But it's I can't eat right now. Going day. to the gym after this. Are you? Yeah. When is the what day is it? Legs. Ooh, yummy. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to the gym after man. this. I can't get there. Hey, fine. Bust I'll drink. He busts out the alcohol. To Hyderabad, a city of nearly 7 million and the fourth largest in India. Today, uh, oh, that is hot. I'm on a mission to show you how superstar chefs cook up your favorite Indian food. On a massive scale. This is a monumental experience. From Hyderabad, world famous biryani. I feel like I'm on a magic carpet ride. All the way to. Oh! The mega food fun is about to start. Now. What is that? Look at this massive row of pots cooking right now where they are making Halim. Halim is popular in India, the Middle East, and Central Asia. There are dozens of pots, tons of fire. It is hundreds of degrees in here. So everywhere, it's made a little bit differently. Here, it's a congealed blend of lentils, wheat, protein, and spices. But those words aren't enough to convey the splendor of this dish. You'll have to see it for yourself. We're going to get into step one. <laughs> uh, I'm dying. <laughs> Were they mixing it with like sledgehammers? Yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. Chilies in a giant steel pot known as a kadai. No, I love the massive process. cooking oh, God, things. He huh? did warn me about five seconds ago. I like they have kind of a paperweight with these big logs on there, and then they have a towel wrapped around the lid so they can get it off. Oh, it smells so good. Oh. Six goats in each one of these. That's over 220 pounds in each pot. Multiple that's a lot of goat. All the pots 220 are, uh, pounds in each pot. I mean, uh, that's one way to look at it. It's also going to be extremely delicious. Boiling goes on for five hours, so the meat reaches the desired degree of tenderness. However, if you know Indian cuisine, you know there's no such thing as a dish with two ingredients. From here, <laughs> that's true. Layer in more Facts. Flavors. Combine ginger garlic paste, coriander, and soaked basmati rice, and mix that with the mutton. This whole lean making is a multi-step process, and now it is time for the wheat. This is over 100 pounds of wheat and water. Let's see it. They're going to do a little bit of a swing action. Get it up there. And then they're gonna pour the whole thing. Let me begin at the beginning of the time with the cake. Tons of wheat flour and water inside. They're gonna mix it together. These guys are shoeless. Just wow. on top of this grass mat. That's all that's protecting them from the intense heat of the food that's inside here. It's amazing because we've got the That's some manual here. labor yeah, right the there, man. Cheese, all these different ingredients that are gonna get kind of crushed and compressed and congealed together. And we're gonna see how this texture completely transforms into something new, different, and beautiful. My feet are on fire. Let's go. Minutes of bashing and mixing, it's time for this. A potent masala consisting of black pepper corns, cappuccini, cinnamon, cardamom, cumin, rose petals, almonds, cloves, and crystal meth. I mean, <laughs> this is all added along with an absolute portion of oil. Now remove the 
the wood and any remaining burning embers from the furnace after dousing it with water. They closed the fireplace with the stone and sealed it with mud. All that's needed now is to maintain this heat while the stew finishes cooking. This is pieced And then they bust that thing open every time and start over? One of the top heavyweight contenders in holding production in this city or any other. Throughout the year, they mostly sell pastries and sweets, but come Ramadan, and they dish out some serious Haleem quantity. Guys, the moment has finally come. We are revealing the Haleem in all its splendid glory. But there's more to do. They've decided the time is right right now, and they're about to jump up here, and I'm not sure what to be honest. Sledgehammers. Once uh, Yash's character from KGF uh, is unemployed, <laughs> this is his next job. Constantly bashing all the meat and wheat and everything against the wall of the pot. That is going to mix it even more, make it super congealed. So all of that goat meat has now basically been minced. This dish is stunning. I'm so hungry. We've been here for hours now, waiting for the final product, and soon. Wow. After 25 minutes. Hammering, they add a three lentil paste and ghee. Pound it for five minutes more. And this labor of love is ready to be invited oh. into your Halim hole. Oh, okay, right here, guys, we finally have the end product. It is a whole new material like you've never seen before. There's some wheat, there's some meat, they're all intertwined and they can never be taken apart. I would never guess there's marriage. like goat meat in there. My wife is watching. <laughs> before serving, they top the hobby with their in-house chili oil, dangerous amounts of ghee, and crunchy fried onions. Oh my! This is the moment I've been waiting for since literally 10 a.m. It's now in the afternoon, and I've got my family pack of halim. This is very thick, stringy, like it has its own sinew wow. inside of it. Wow! Looks That's like beans. Together, like river moss. It does. The it looks like refried bean beans. Dripping on my jeans. It's time for the bite. Let's go for Something it. Something tells me it's not particularly healthy, but I bet it's glorious. Oh my gosh! Whoa! This is a monumental experience. That is delicious. There's like nothing to chew, but it's sticky while you're eating it. That is super, super rich with all that ghee. Beyond that, the chili oil making it super spicy. That is such an incredible mix of flavors. This is remarkable. It's a lot of calories, but it's so addictive. I've tried this dish in Oman, I've tried it in Iran, and they made it in a little bit different way. Maybe it's because we're in India. This really packs a powerful punch. This is my absolute favorite Halim of all time. <laughs> so that was Halim. <laughs> And this is bread. Bread with a recipe. He's taking it up a notch with his we music and his editing. Our next destination here or whoever he paid. Yeah, whoever he paid to do it. Bread I've never seen before in India. The most I doubt he edits anymore. No, no. Ninja, who reaches his hands inside a fiery inferno hundreds of times per day. In India, many of their breads are in an oval shape, but today, oh no. Today we're getting square. This unusual carb creation begins with a dough consisting of all-purpose flour, water, salt, ghee, and yeast. They roll it out to exactly the right depth, then they pass it to the next guy. This is something called four-corner bread. The next man on this assembly line presses out a square shape that allows the dough to rest and rise for 30 minutes. This is a nice break from that super rich, oily, crazy, heavy food we just had. This is the bakery signature branding. Using a steel tool that looks like a comb and his fingertips, he transforms the look of the dough in seconds. Pretty soon that's going to head into the oven and we're going to see the final product. My man, how you doing? All right, I am with the bread master right here. Before putting it in the oven, this boss level baker wets the dough with jaggedy water to prevent slipping before laying it upon the bread pillow. You guys have a bread pillow at home? I doubt it. Now, the most <laughs> impressive part. This fiery tandoor oven is hundreds of degrees. But that doesn't stop this man from sticking his bare arm inside. What I always love and respect about people who work with the tandoor is the way they just slap the bread on there with such confidence because it is very hot. In this oven, he not only bakes, but also monitors up to 50 non at one time. The tandoor's temperature is scientifically controlled by the occasional sprinkling of H2O. Once the bread hits the right shade of golden brown, it's perfect and ready to eat. Wow. I'm take one out and try it out. My man, can I have one? This is going to be way too hot. This is a bad idea. He's gonna hand me one. Okay, yep, that's hot. It's very warm. Here it is. That looks oh. gorgeous. It's so much more doughy and pillowy than I expected. You know what I mean? He's like, ah, I'm working. And I <laughs> eat this all the time. Oh, yeah, that is 
really delicious. This texture is phenomenal. Soft, pillowy. This is something you would often ah! remember to hide. Oh, it's so oh, it's so good. I'm not sure exactly what is behind the pattern. My guess is that pattern stops it from ballooning up. This is some of the best precious bread I've had in a long time. These guys are doing great work. Everything they're timing is by heart and by sight. It's not like a McDonald's french fry fryer. These are skills that have been accumulated over a long time. And my gosh, they're crushing it. Next, my entire reason for traveling to the city of Hyderabad. Guys, welcome to the Biryani. Biryani. Factory. This place is amazing. Everybody says you have to come to the city to see Biryani. It is the Biryani that defines Biryani in India and perhaps in the world. Welcome to Shah G House Restaurant. Each day, they make not 50, not 500, but over 1,700 pots of biryani sent to seven restaurants across the city. We're on the top floor right now of the restaurant, and this is the very beginning of the process. Biryani is a mixed rice dish originating among Muslim folks in the Indian subcontinent. Its flavors are like fireworks, and your first taste will embed a more visceral oh, memory than your at first kiss. Right now we're seeing huge handfuls of rock salt going in. From here, the flavors come in waves and layers. Ginger garlic paste, green chili paste, garam masala, cloves, red chili powder, fried onions, coriander, fenugreek leaves, ghee, and then there's the meat. So oh, we are in the mutton room. Whole animals here, and they are kind of chipping it down into little bitty pieces like this. Everything's by hand. And yep. All. It's kind of cut indiscriminately. There is no sirloin. There is no steak. It's all just little bitty pieces of meat cubed up, and all that is going to join the biryani. So when you're eating, you never know what you're going to get. This mutton comes from little bitty goats. They were playing in fields, frolicking, and now they're here. <laughs> Bite-sized chunks. Each pot receives one goat's worth of protein. On top of the mutton, <laughs> add half of the water. Turn. Pour the water, then mix everything together. Ah! Uh. On the side. This is basmati rice. It's put in there with coriander, with salt, and then it's cooked for about 10 minutes, but not cooked all the way through. It's important that it finishes cooking in this pot when they steam it. Once our rice is medium rare, we're ready for the next step. So he's coming under this giant rice cooker that would make any Asian lady in Korea jealous. Bring it over here and one by one layering it on top, making sure it's nice and smooth. Wow. So we have most of the ingredients there after the steaming, my friends. Then it's time to eat. That's a large now spoon. Add layer of rice, saffron water, cumin seeds, and one more layer of rice. More saffron water and the legally mandatory ghee. With the pot literally bursting with flavor, they seal the pot with a twisted cloth, close the lid, and let it steam. After 30 minutes, it's maximally delicious and ready for consumption. Oh. Check it out, the biryani in its final form. They got me a little personal pan biryani, and I said, absolutely not. I need the family platter. <laughs> I'm feeling the eggs are just gonna taste like eggs, but let's find out. Oh. oh yeah, that's an egg. We're we'll taking into this. Now every piece is gonna be a little bit different. I feel like I'm on a magic carpet ride. That is beautifully seasoned. The flavors have really stuck and glommed onto that protein. I'm gonna dig a little bit of a hole. Wow, this is deep. Oh, yes. All different colors of rice. There's some that's been mixed with the saffron water, some that's just been hit with all that chili powder. Let's try it out. Oh, it hits you in waves. It's like first the explosion, but then the aftershock. The rice is so perfect, fluffy, and full of flavor. I got some meat with the rice. And that's when it starts to get really nice. I cannot get over how tender that meat is. And that's just the beginning. You could add a spicy gravy. It's so potent. I probably put on a touch too much, but wow, that took my breath away. And then you can cool yourself down with a little bit of curd. Oh, yes. And that's a winner for me. The yogurt gives me a little bit of balance. A lot of people come to India to attain enlightenment. And I think I just got one step closer. <laughs> worth the trip here to Hyderabad. We do have one more location before we wrap up this video. Let's go. Uh, 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 There's no better way to end a good meal than with a dessert, unless you can go to an entire dessert factory. Gape vape. Desserts in India are fascinating. Super sweet combinations. I want the score to this video. Yeah. Like silver, cardamom, and flowers. Here, in this factory, the options are endless. 
This place has been around since 1989. They're an OG, the Almond House, making desserts on a massive scale like you have never seen before. It's crazy how much action there is. Sugar, milk, what else do you put in the dessert? Um, Sugar, milk. Um, instead of making a baking sheet of desserts, how do you make enough desserts that can feed a freaking Indian army? That's what they're doing here, and that's what we're gonna witness right now. First up, Moti Chur Ladu. Step one, the chef concocts a sweet syrup by mixing water, cardamom powder, food coloring, and plenty of sugar. Add ram flour that's been fried in ghee. Yes, butter fried flour. This ain't Weight Watchers. This is candy coated crack for your taste. <laughs> After cooking, let the mixture cool down, allowing the syrup to set and fuse with the gram flour before entering the ball in nature. This is a ladu machine. Ladu means ball. Let me Pay your editor more. Your yeah, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about the production in a minute. Really quiet makes the balls so they don't have to make it by hand. You can see each of these guys with a couple of ladus in their hands, kind of juggling them about, getting that final touch and shape. I love that motion. Shape, but when it comes to portioning, making them perfect and uniform. This machine does it all. It's gonna hit the dining room floor, you can order it, and that is something we're gonna try out pretty soon. I'm gonna go from least interesting looking to most interesting looking. And now that I don't appreciate balls, like it's just a really nice ball. Whoa. I should have done the whole thing. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it. The mouthfeel, it's like equal parts sticky and oily. People try to mock the USA and the desserts we come up with. Oh, you guys fry a whole Snickers bar or a Twinkie. Um, have you been to India? <laughs> <laughs> particles are loose so they're kind of falling apart in your mouth as you eat them super syrupy sweet deliciousness every bite has a little bit of a gush of sugar coming out of it here our next one the kaju honey roll let's see how that's made every time i come to this country i see some fanciful creation just that's brand new to me there's a little assembly line that inexhaustible is five guys well i'm not doing anything four guys <laughs> working together Starting here, on this side, a huge hunk of dough. It looks like dough, but this is nothing made from flour. It's made of Almond? cashew paste, cardamom, oh, okay. and sugar. That's one hell of a combination. Wow. There, they put in butterscotch that's been mixed with honey. He hits it with a little bit more honey so it can go on top of these almonds that have been crushed and stick onto there. That is my favorite. They don't just want to make it to another bowl, another ladu. They make it into basically a little confectionery cigar. It's candy. You can eat it or you can smoke it. And you can't smoke it, actually. I like the shape. It's interesting. It creates more surface area so more nuts can get on there. I know what you're asking. Which nuts? These nuts. I'm gonna split it in half. <laughs> Inside you can see some of that butterscotch. It is thick, it's delicious. Let's give it a try. Delicious crunchy almonds on the outside. Inside crunchy butterscotch. Excellent flavor. Nice texture. Much more texture than the last one. I love it. That's quite delicious. We've come to our last food right here. This is Malai Gewar. It's traditionally associated with the fifth Hindu calendar month. It will shortly be associated Dang. with my mouth. <laughs> Fry the batter in ghee, shaping it in a gewar bowl. This milky looking batter is made of all purpose flour, ghee, and water. Once it reaches the point of critical crispiness, oh, wow, never seen that before. Submerge it in a sugary syrup, ensuring oh, it's oh, 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 it like this would make me happy, but it turns out this is just the foundation. Next, the inside is coated with sweet condensed milk. Oh, Silver lining, you know, for the optimists. Top this with droplets of saffron water, actual saffron, and chopped nuts. How much does that thing cost? The final and most important step of all. Mmm. That is so rich. It's crunchy like a funnel cake. The condensed milk is so sweet and thick and syrupy. Never seen anything like that one. People love saffron in India. Anything that suggests that it's luxurious or expensive. Saffron has a unique taste to it. It's not usually a taste I would associate with desserts, but here I kind of like it because it's a sharp contrast to the oversweet sugariness of this dessert in general. The silver tastes like that thing. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Super delicious. Very unique. I've never seen that one. I've never seen that one in India before. Very exciting. My insulin is through the roof. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick blood test. I'm going to cut 
comes to making food en masse, nobody does it like India. There's over 1 billion people here. I mean, you better figure out how to make a lot of food real quick. India, you did it once again. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. India, okay. I would so, that raw this place first of all, production quality. Yeah, I don't know which one of those was the editor of this video, but fantastic job on everything. Obviously, the top notch has always been production of this. Yeah, of this guy's... and I can I can sense the the freeing. Like, trust me, <laughs> I you know better than I. But I remember when I was doing stuff on my personal channel, the thing and Andrani and I are exactly the same way. Give me the creative stuff. Give me the stuff where you're just winging it or having fun or creating and filming, editing and uploading. Well, and it frees you up. He's never been more quick, witty, seeming to have fun. It wouldn't surprise me if part of that is that he's freed and knows the quality of what the rest of the team's doing to put the stuff together is top notch, and it gives him that sense of liberty and freedom to just focus on what he loves, which is the food and the people. Mm -hmm. It shows that this is one of the best videos he's we've seen of his. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, a fantastic job by the editor. Yeah, great job editing though. I, I know you. It's not for you, but it's it's very it's a very creative field, and it's you it's, enjoy it, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't. The the work that obviously the the regular videos that we do are more tedious right but when you get when you can get into a video that requires a lot of editing and and stuff like that it's very now i don't mind it field. when i'm overseeing it yeah so like back at harvest no i've always i've always enjoyed editing production videos and production trailers have somebody else doing the technicalities i know exactly what i want and go okay yeah that on the music that on the music that on the music no back up that but to have to actually input that stuff same thing with music like when we did our celebration videos if we if we didn't have steve uh, yeah when i was a, a kid and i was i was um figuring out what i wanted to do if i went to college and stuff that was one of the things i was like if i can't be an actor or director or something i i wouldn't mind being an editor my, my friend kenny was an actor yeah and that's exactly what he did. Things weren't happening with him the way he wanted acting to go. Mm -hmm. And he had an opportunity to go into editing, and he just started doing it. And now that's all he does. He yeah. loves it. Editing's fun for yeah, me. Yeah, he loves editing. Um, but shouts out to your whole team. Yeah, great, great team videos job. always. Everything in there I would, would want to eat. The food. I can't wait till we can uh, go back to India and oh. um, uh, try more food. Stuff we've never seen. Yeah. The Halim, I didn't even know oh, what that was. I'd love to go to Hyderabad and actually yes, eat Hyderabad Briani. Briani. That'd be amazing. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so many things I would love to do. So, great video. If there's yeah, other food ones. videos we can react to, please let us know what they are down below. Josh!